Travel and things in association with sun destinations, iconic destinations with amazing experiences present in conversation with. I am your host, David Batsoffen, and my guest today has been gracing our TV screens since 2004. But now she's here with me on In Conversation With, the inimitable Leanne Manis. Leanne, welcome to In Conversation With. How are you doing? David, I'm so happy to be with you. It's been far too long, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you about possibly my, my favorite hobby in the whole wide world, which we clearly share in common here is travel. Travel. So why, before we go into the pictures, which thank you very much, I plundered from your, your Facebook page uh, because it was very short notice, this chat today. Um, why Iceland? And did you sort of go Joburg, Iceland, or was there a deviation through sort of Norway, Denmark, and the Scandinavian countries? So let's talk about why Iceland first. So I have yeah. always had this fascination for some reason with Iceland. I mean, Iceland has been, for me, just such a, I, I don't know, there's just been something about that place because I think it is so totally opposite to what we live in. So mm -hmm. Ice has fascinated me. Iceland has fascinated me. The people of Iceland, the, the, the cultures that come out of it, the, the myths and legends about it, the Vikings, uh, <laughs> and most importantly, I think the Northern Lights. I think that is really what I've always sort of dreamt about seeing, which by the way, a spoiler alert, we, we didn't see them. And, and uh, that was not the, that wasn't the point of the story. I've got yeah? news for you. The Northern Lights in Joburg, i.e. Santon, <laughs> You also can't see half of the time because of load exactly. shedding. Exactly, exactly. So you know, I, I suppose we should be great. We should be grateful for the little bit of lights we do see. But you know, the point of this trip was was never ever to go and see the Northern Lights. That's going mm. to be, and will be an actual trip on its own. So yeah. we actually had my husband's fiftieth this year, so we wanted to plan something really, really oh, special. Okay. We'd already booked a cruise and and very much so what you said. Um, we did the, the so besides doing the Iceland leg, which I'll tell you all about, we also did a cruise through the fjords in Norway. Uh, so that was, we, I wanted to find something that complemented uh, the fjords mm -hmm. and doing that cruise in Norway, which took off from Copenhagen. A friend of mine who works for the UN was based in Copenhagen for quite some time. And she said to me, if you're going to Copenhagen, you have to fly to Iceland. So I said, are you serious? Is that something that you know should be done? She said, it's it's compulsory. You have to go to Iceland. <laughs> so I was. That was it. Mission was on, and it was hard to work out. But that was me. Had it in my mind. We were going mm. to do it. Convinced my husband. That's what he wanted to do for his fiftieth. The poor guy. He had no say in it. But he's so grateful that 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 he's married to a persistent person who just was going to make it come true. And we did. And we were blown away. We'll go through the photographs in the in a moment, but uh, a question I want to ask is: If you that um, uh, Iceland centric, if that is a word, or if it isn't, it is now. Do you do you shout for them during the Eurovision because their entries can be a lot of fun? <laughs> They're the best. I even watched the movie, the Will yes. Ferrell one. Did you watch that one? Yes. I loved it. I mean, it's just it's so funny. In fact, one of my one of my, 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 well, I suppose my husband, which has subsequently become one of my favorite band is an Icelandic band. Um, mm. And you'll have a look at, at, look at one of the, the, the reels that I actually did on Instagram and I put them as a soundtrack to it. They just absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. And, and, and so but put, the, put the, the cheesy Eurovision to the side. Their music seems to be brilliant. I don't know. They, they also seem to be really and, great. And if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> do they not have a woman for a president? So the story goes, and I and I also love this, and that's what I loved about Iceland is how different it is. There was a young guy, young boy, asked his father, um, "Dad, is it possible for a man to be president as well?" And <laughs> it, it was just the best thing I've ever heard because the. He was a young kid. He was born into a female presidency and through, you know, most of his sort of childhood growing up and going to university was a female president. So he didn't understand, you know, can't men have an opportunity? And this just blew my mind. I'm like, what? So there is a country like that. And, you know, the people, the people are amazing as well. Mm. They are happy. They are so, so friendly and welcoming and so well-versed, well-read, fluent in English. Mm. I think half the population have written a book. They live through folklore and legends, but through facts and learning. And 
Another really interesting fact about this country is they are the only country, uh, uh, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating, but I think it is true. They're the only country without an active army. Um, no. They don't have a they don't have one. They obviously they're members of NATO. So mm. if they do need help, that's obviously where yeah. they'll go. But they have one. Um, and I can understand why. It's so yeah, it was very peaceful. Okay. There's really just you don't feel a threat whatsoever, except for the natural forces, which yeah, the weather can yeah. be very, very it can be. We'll we'll get to that in a moment. But I want I want to start yeah. this off with a quote that I found on on your Facebook page, which is I take it, it's an Icelandic proverb that says. If you cry because the sun has gone out of your life, your tears will prevent you from seeing the stars, which I think is yeah. stunning, really interesting. Me too. I actually saw that somewhere in Iceland and I mm. had to I had to write it. I I don't know. I was enamored with this place. And you know, I'm not sort of I I mean we've traveled quite extensively mm. as as you have. And you know, I've been and you see and you know Europe and Europe is beautiful and you know, it, it it's got that same sort of feel wherever you go with a little bit of its own essence but Iceland is something I've never experienced before and I've never been to before and I've never felt things that I felt there um mm. it it just is it is it is nature on another level uh everything is is na is natural everything is just magnificent and they they work with nature they don't they don't they don't beat nature they don't try and overpower nature mm. you know they use nature and enhance it i mean i mean the photo you've got up now is exactly what we're talking about so this was in one of the the places that we visited on the so we did the golden loop we drove around that golden circle and this was one of the places we were staying which just happened to be one of those those beautiful outdoor um uh, spas that you go mm. into the thermal baths which are heated from naturally heated from the ground and you go into the freezing baltic ocean so you force yourself to go in there and then you freeze basically get your body used to this freezing temperature so you go from a sauna into the into this and then mm. into one of their thermal spas which is is beautiful in fact i was not even allowed to take this photograph i snuck in once the place had closed, I was getting dressed and I said, I've got to get a picture of this place. And I went out and just took this one. And, and I'm so glad I did because I it's think a, it just gives you the feel. Yeah, it's, beautiful. it's a beautiful picture. And I mean, the horizon, is, you can see off into the distance, the clouds, everything just works as an image. Um, it does. And same I, place. That's that thermal yeah. pool. That you is that the into. thermal pool there? How, how cold is cold, Leanne, when you get into that Baltic? I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't know what the temperature is, but it was freezing. I mean, I've done that early morning swim at the Atlantic in Cape Town. You mm. know, where you go off and, and you do that swim where you all go into the water. But I can I tell you this was, this was, I don't know, maybe I'd say at least 10 times colder. You know, my son was doing it. He was mm. going in and out like it was nothing. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And then I just said, you know what? If my son is doing it, my husband is doing it, I am going to do it. I am going to show them I can do this. And I did. And I went in. And once you actually immerse yourself, yeah. your body adapts to this freezing cold water, which is quite bizarre because then you like, I mean, you just, you could stay there for hours, but you actually shouldn't. And then yeah. you come out and just yeah. in your mind. You know, enough, mind I, was, I was watching a program this morning on a woman who swam from... Um, Ireland to Scotland and there's oh, a wow. strait there it's one of the top seven you know it's one of those big five of, of ocean swims and she yes. went in with a coach into the into this freezing freezing cold water and he just counted and when they by the time he got to 10 she'd relaxed mm. and when they finished the swim they were sitting on the boat warm with the excitement and the adrenaline and not even putting yeah. a jacket on. She said, I'm so warm, I can't believe it. It's amazing. I, I you know, it what your what your body can do is something yeah. extraordinary. It's yeah. incredible. It really is. So I mean, as you move along, and I think that's also something that's that's lovely to note about Iceland is that nothing is the same. Wherever you mm. look, it's, it's it's kind of you go from um you go from uh, looking at a glacier, going into a hot a hot, you know, thermal pool, um, to looking at a volcano, to then going on to these bright green 
mossy volcanic rocks. I mean, what you're seeing is an old volcano with moss all over mm. it. And somebody had said to me, which I, I know I, I shouldn't tell people to do because, you know, they tell you, you really shouldn't go and feel or touch or stand on this moss. But I sort of had to feel what <laughs> this friend of mine told me. She said, if you feel it, it's like a trampoline. It's like you've never felt anything like this in your life. Mm. So I, I actually touched it and your hand just keeps going. I mean, that is so thick and full of the most magnificent moss of a beautiful color. And so you go from such differing sights from this bright green to ice white to yeah. uh, this yeah. blue sea to black beaches and black rocks. You know, all of these things are just, they're mind boggling. So that is everywhere you drive. That's very much so the scenery and, that you'll see. And volcanic rock is not quite as heavy as you expect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, I can't tell you I picked it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't pick it up, but, but yes, I, yeah. I mean, I imagine. No, I have picked it up. I, I picked okay. up, what, I thought it was a chunk. And you know when you pick up something and it looks hefty, so your body, yes. your arm tenses. And I almost threw it over my head because when I looked <laughs> because at it, you were there was no something. way. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. It is insane. <laughs> so this is now another incredible little site. These are the geezers. So... Mm -hmm. These are these hot, this is all very, everything is natural. Nothing yeah. is not yeah. natural. That's all I can tell you. So this these are those Disneyland. little, this is not Disneyland. And actually on a Disneyland, if I can diverse for a second. Mm. So we had our children with us. So my, my daughter is um, 10, she turned 11. In well, yeah. This is all why we were in Iceland. Both of my kids had their birthdays. So my son was is 13, he turned 14 there. This just happened to be on his birthday. And my daughter was, you know, she turned uh, she turned 12. I'm talking rubbish. No, what is she? Oh, she's gonna shout, I'm gonna shout at myself. She's 11, what am I saying? She's 11, she was 10, she turned 11 while we were in Iceland. I'm confusing myself. Anyway, so we always said to them, you know, all of their friends are going to Disneyland and they're enjoying going and doing that whole thing and going on the rides and standing in queues for 50 hours and experience Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and all of that. And we, you know, my husband and I are like, I really, I, I don't know. One day, maybe we will experience it. That'll mm -hmm. be wonderful. I mean, my husband and I have done it and I don't think it's anything that you have to do when they're children. I think when yeah. you go into this, you become a child again, mm -hmm. but this experience, you know, to be able to take them with us to a place like Iceland, it grew, their, their minds grew, their yeah. eyes grew, their brains grew. It was just something that you'll never get to experience. And I, I pray they do experience it once again in their lifetime. But if they don't, I'm glad we were able to give you this to them. To. As children. Yeah. But yeah, you know, to sort of compare this to a Disneyland trip, don't even think about <laughs> no, it. You don't know, even think about it. This is real. This is all real. What you're seeing is all real. It's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. but, but getting back to the geezers, that's where every 10 minutes you'll see in one of the photos, this is a little geezer yeah. where it just suddenly bubbles. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's my son. Um, my, my, my little dog. Oh. My, my little dog. <laughs> you don't it know. Leanne, my you son don't dog. know how old no, your child is. You don't know I'm the calling my dog. your dog and your son. My dog. No, but, but that is like my little child. I love that dog. So it is like a, <laughs> it is like one. There we go. When you okay, kids watch this, you are going to get shouted at. You're going to have to pay bribe <laughs> money to them not to, to take um, screenshots and hold it over <laughs> you for the rest of your life. <laughs> They know, they know, they can keep with the dogs for my attention. Oh my gosh, sorry, I do, I love my Labradoodles, what can I tell okay. you? All right. Anyway, so back getting to back to this, let's go back, at least I didn't bring my doodles with to Iceland, it was just, yeah. just my actual birth children, not the dog children, anyway. Fair enough. So, so this is these, these hot water it bubbles under it's a natural natural from the heat there mm -hmm. and anyway uh, from all the pressure it bursts so this is a small one but there is another big one you may or may not have uh, i did see the photograph well. yeah yeah so then there's a big one and it's called Giza. that's what this one in particular is called but they're all over iceland and okay. this just has a natural spurt of water every five minutes it just this thing just comes out of the earth and you're like what did we just see what was it that we just saw and that was it i mean this water goes up to a hundred degrees that's how hot it is wow. uh, yeah. under the surface of the of, of the earth it's mm. an incredible and i did see amongst you i did see amongst your photographs a sign that said 80 to 100 degrees yeah. so i should there imagine people need to be aware you could you could burn yourself 
Nasty Deep you could. is always one that wants to climb over the 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 whatever is holding you back and go and stick their yeah. hand in the water just to see if it's true. Guaranteed. You know one of your Instagram TikTokers that's like, yes. how far can I push this? Yeah. So this is another one, and this is this is amazing. You gotta forgive me for not making um for not remembering all the names. I, I, I wish I did, but no, but I sprung this, this on you. You have let me just set the let me put this into context. People, Leanne has no idea what pictures I chose. She was on air this morning <laughs> when she said to me, Here's the link, choose the pictures. I don't have time. And she literally got hold of me this morning and said, We can do the interview today at 10. I have time. Um, so this is as much of a surprise for her as it is for, for you and for me. I'm loving it because you make me go down sort of memory lane, even though this was in was in August, but it just it brings back all those emotions again. So this is a volcano, and they the, the story behind this particular volcano is ex instead of a explosion, mm -hmm. it was an implosion. So what had happened, and this was actually before inhabitants were on the island, so they don't necessarily know the story of what happened here, but this is just a massively deep hole um, that goes down as opposed to what you normally see with a volcano that's, mm. that's, that's up. So this has got this hole, it is filled with water um, and full of red sand, full of an ice blue water and the green moss around it. And, and this is, I mean, these are the photos, I can't tell you I've manipulated these photos except for I've just popped the colors slightly. That's all yeah. I've done. And what happens here is, you can see the red sand. So we usually on the, the volcanoes, you actually see more of a black sand, mm. um, black rock. But this is indicative of, this is actually still in volcanic terms, still a very fresh volcano. It's not old. Um, this happened not so long ago. So that's why they'll say to you, you know, this is a, this is very, very special as an implosion, yeah. as opposed to an explosion. And in geological terms, it was not so long ago. But I mean, we're still talking hundreds and hundreds of years yes. ago. But that's yeah. that's what it looks like. And it's a brilliant experience. This is not from 100 years ago. This is only from August. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's exactly. you and the family yeah. in, a, in what looks like a waterfall. So, you know, the one thing I remember when I said to my husband, we're going to go to Iceland, we're going to make it work. He's like, oh, no, really? He said, all I ever see people do there is go visit waterfalls. And he says, really, what is so special about waterfalls, you know? And I was like, just like I said to you in the beginning, just trust me. Just trust yeah. me. I promise yeah. you. I've never seen waterfalls like I've seen in Iceland. I mean, everywhere you drive is another waterfall, which is another spectacular experience to be a part of um because what what i love about this and and again and, and i think this is this is what what happens when you're in iceland is that they want you to immerse yourself into the nature i said that earlier they don't they don't destroy it or build massive hotels they they want you to leave it as is and enjoy it as much as possible mm. so you are allowed to go as close as you want to <clears throat> with nobody telling you to stop, nobody telling you don't go there, don't do anything. I mean, use your own logic and know what to do and what not mm. to do. But just when you think you've sort of gotten as close as you can, there's another path taking you even further in and further in. And to the part where this particular waterfall, you actually walk behind it. This is a this stunning gush. photograph. It's really interesting. Isn't it just? Yeah. I mean, to just understand, <clears throat> understand the volume of water and how magnificent it is. I mean, it's, it's deafening. It is deafening. It's beautiful. So, and the other one that you saw earlier was another one that's actually around the corner from this particular okay. one, which you walk, you walk to. And that one's in a cave. And there's always like a, a little myth and legend around anything yeah. and everything. Story. Is, <clears> and that before, was that. If, if, sorry, Leanne, I'm talking over you. Before we for it. look into this picture, um, and I think I've got a clear... It was, I found a close-up of this little church as well. Is there a season, um, a tourist season in Iceland, or can you go at any time of the year? So I think you should, you know, you should plan this very carefully because, and there are many reasons I say that, because I've seen horrific experience that people have had in Iceland where the wind can blow like a hundred and something kilometers. It literally pushes people off their feet. Mm -hmm. um, your cars, the roads get washed away. Um, when it's very, very cold, they obviously the roads are full of ice. They get closed. You can't access certain places. 
Um, then, of course, remember, there's only two hours of light uh, in, in the winter months. Yes, you get to see the northern lights, but, you know, the, you don't get to see these marvelous things that we're seeing. Mm. So I... I don't know what we did right, but we must have we we must have timed this to perfection because we had sunlight basically all day. So I mean, one of the photographs uh, you'll perhaps come across it, and even even that one, you know, that one we were talking about when I was at the spa, and we were at the natural yes. by the Baltics. Yeah. Do you know that that was? I think that was at about eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. That photograph. Yeah, that was. From, so from what I gather, it can mess with your head. Because if there's it sunlight can. all the time, you don't know where to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> you don't. I mean, yes, when you, I suppose you get back to your hotel room, you close yes. the curtains, it's black out. But it enabled us to fit so much into our day. Mm. So, I mean, we managed to see so much because we had so much sunlight. And yeah. we managed to get, I mean, we got to hotels driving up until, because we'd planned a little route mm. um, with hotels along the way and that's all we had we just had the hotels and you know along the destination so at least we had a place to sleep and yeah and relax as well. but you know the rest of it we didn't know what we were going into but it was Bandy. it was easy to do but yeah i say <clears throat> the time we went which was kind of the end of august beginning of Oct uh, beginning of september mm -hmm. was phenomenal for me that was a brilliant time to go we did miss the northern lights so i i would recommend and i actually saw somebody who embarked on a trip perhaps two weeks after we arrived because the northern lights come from about the middle of september mm. uh and they, and they spotted them yeah. so if you plan the trip i think a good time would go you know around the maybe beginning of september, september. to the middle of september i don't know okay. it, it's a gamble but yeah, all right it's a good time this little village oh now this is probably one of the most photographed churches it's just a church um, mm. uh, that's that's there and you've got those basalt rocks that are in the ocean those three very very famous ones that that <clears throat> overlook uh, when you stand on the black beach you'll you'll get a glimpse of that and it's just so uh, you know the photos that you can take they are just beautiful you know yeah. it's the church of iceland yeah. okay um, and yeah and that's 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 just just one of the beautiful red roofed churches that overlook it because some I mean, of this the, is... some of game of thrones was shot in iceland Exactly. Yeah. All of these kind of yeah. movies. There was another, what was it, was Game of Thrones? And it was something, it'll come to me now where, where and you'll see it on that specific beach that they, they had filmed uh, a lot of the things over there. Star Wars. Oh, one of the, 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 yeah. Also, Star Wars on that, on that one beach where mm -hmm. they've got that, it's, it's actually the world's most dangerous beach. And I'll explain to you in a bit when we get to hopefully those photos as well. Yeah. These are glaciers. Um, I mean, these are just, they're moving glaciers. They change shapes and sizes. And uh, as you sit and stare at it, it's just beautiful. This was actually next to another place, which is called the Diamond Beach. Mm. And the Diamond Beach is a black beach. I mean, most of the beaches are black because of the sand, the volcanic yeah. activity. Yeah. So the sand there. And then they've got these massive, massive boulders of ice that are just scattered all along this beach and right behind it are these glaciers so so that's that's kind of tell, that it's 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 beautiful yeah tell amazing. me you didn't stand there and go ice ice baby mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> i didn't david i did not do that <laughs> I mean, your pictures are so evocatively and they really you know as a photographer i look i look at photographs with a whole different eye and when i went through mm -hmm. these it was a case of when do I stop stealing yeah. from you for this chat? Because your images are just so, so beautiful. But I think the landscape lends itself to that. You know, you get to a point yeah. where you go, I, I need to just look without looking through a viewfinder. You know, because even though you may think the photos are beautiful, what your eyes see yeah. are a million times better. And 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 honestly, I, I thank you for the for the compliment because I just love photography but mm -hmm. this is a photographer's dream yeah. the amount of photographers yeah. that were there and taking snaps I mean you can't go wrong this <laughs> is a glacier now, this is a beach that I forced my family to stop in I'm, I'm probably one of those worst people to travel with because they were all exhausted it was time to go back and I was like please one more. I just want to go one more stop and we saw this 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 was a glacier very far away mm. but there was a beautiful 
viewpoint right on the top of a mountain. And I said, please, can we just stop there? I just want to see this. Oh, the fighting. Mom, no. My husband was like, listen to your mother. Shame. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, I won. Everybody put their jackets on and we geared up again. And off we went to take a picture from far of mm -hmm. this glacier. Get to the lookout point. And as I said to you earlier, there was a path. <laughs> and down the path we walked. And further down the path we walked. And more and more and more. And where do you land up? right next to this beautiful crystal clear water that is right in front of the glacier and we must have spent about an hour and a half on this beach just staring at the site the boys were throwing rocks on the water i, I saw that photograph would... but i thought that was yeah. a bit intrusive because that was such a nice family image that i left it off it's, this one it just skimming rocks and yeah. having the time of their lives i mean this is in front of you and when i when i say to you that if there's something about Iceland, it's like, you know, you, you have your breath taken away in many places that you visit in the world and you see the wonders of God. But this place, this place, God actually takes your hand, he holds it, and he walks you through how magnificent the world is if yeah. you leave it and let it be. And that's, that's what we really experienced there. It was amazing. Um, yeah, this is just another lookout point, and it's kind of those um those big basalt rocks that i showed you in the sea this is just another viewpoint um a bit closer up of them it's 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 stunning it really is that was on the diamond beach i know this is my beach. favorite favorite photograph of yours it's just oh really it's, yeah oh, i love, love okay. this i really and truly really do um are you yeah, a whiskey, we're, we're are you a whiskey running, fan yeah, we, sorry i did see the picture no i don't fan. drink but i did see the photograph okay. of the bottle of scotch and I'd wondered if you'd used some of that ice in a glass. Yes. yes. <laughs> Probably your favorite picture was put into the glass of whiskey. So yeah, yeah. we drank that. We drank that one. <laughs> we, we're running out of time and I have two more images. This one. So there is a Santa Claus kit. Um, yes. And, but you only letters, no postcards, please. I wonder why. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> No idea. I wonder. I suppose yeah. they want you to write a story. They want a big All story. Right. But, then, but then also from that to this, unattended children will be sold to the circus. Uh, this, was a, this was a little coffee shop that this person had taken an old classic school bus yeah. and made into a coffee shop. And so that. it was it was gorgeous. It's called School Beans. And yes. these were the little signs that were placed. Very quirky, very funny. They got some beautiful, beautiful images there, I must say. And, you know, all in all, it is, it's a roller coaster ride when you go there from mm. one place, from one place you look to the other. Right in the beginning, you asked me how we got there. So yeah. I think it's important to yeah. tell people, firstly, um, please stop me because I know you, we're running into time constraints. But number one, we flew to London. So we flew mm. from Johannesburg to London, and then we caught... Icelandic Air, which is a phenomenal airline, really, really nice, flies you straight into Reykjavik. And you must spend at least two or three days in Reykjavik, hire a car, because we, we were wondering, do we go on a tour? Iceland is very expensive. Don't, don't be fooled. Whichever way mm -hmm. you look at it, it's an expensive holiday you're going to take. But we cut out costs by hiring a car um, and then working. They've got a lot of tour operators that put self-drive packages together for you. And they work with different hotels and they will okay. allow you to yeah. book through them. Mm -hmm. So do that, plot a course, and that's how you do it. And it's very, very easy and simple to drive. We, we loved it. That was probably the nicest part. And it's easy to get around and navigate. Get your get GPS going, Google Maps, you sort it. And, and the roads, um, firstly, do they drive on the same side of the road as we do? No, different okay. side of the road to us. So that's a that's a bit of a, an adjustment. Yeah, Definitely go for yeah. a bigger sort of land. We, we had a land cruiser that we mm. were driving. My husband's very good at that stuff. I don't know. I'd feel a bit nervous. The roads are quite narrow. So okay. it literally is no, no emergency lane. It's just sort of <laughs> one and one. <laughs> Um, and and you go, but people are very very polite. They're very good. Um, they they seem to work it nicely. I worry a little bit of what it's like in winter when the ice gets on yeah. the road. And and for us, I don't know how to. I don't know how we would handle that. But that's why I emphasize again the mm. time of the year we went was beautiful. We were very, we struck it very. Lightly. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it. And your pictures um, seem to 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 um, show that you know there's no yeah. you sitting on the side of the road with a car in a ditch type of thing, unless you kept those pictures out of this lot. <laughs> no, 
Something like that. Thank goodness we were a bit nervous that might happen. But no, it was absolutely perfect. And even when you hire the car, they mm. give you like a like a snow shovel and a and a thing that you chip the ice off your windscreen. We didn't have to use any of that. So we were, we were again very lucky. What's next on the list for Leanne Manis? I know that you've been like me up Kilimanjaro. Um, I, I think you've skydived as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, shark diving? My, I've done it. Uh, that's been on a bucket list. of. I was going to do it this year for my 70th and then changed my mind. So maybe next year. You know what? It's not as scary as you think it is because you're yeah. actually in this cage. It's it's kind of it's 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 quite amazing. I have to tell you, it was an amazing experience. I haven't done it with the great whites though, so that's the no. yeah, I, that's still a big. I haven't done that. So right. I've done tiger like, sharks with no cage, off the Natal um, coast. Okay, no, I had a cage on the Natal coast. So okay, you one up than me. You one up than me. Yeah, but experiences are everything, David. I promise you, we've got this one life. Just I know, live it. Live it. Yeah, oh, yes. and I we have the you. most awesome, awesome country. If only we wouldn't rush like lemmings to the sea. Stop halfway. I mean, I found the most awesome little guest house in the, in Leidenberg on my way to Kruger. And now every time I go north, I, I, I stay over a night. I've built it into my trip. It's just wonderful. It's amazing. It's, you know? Yeah. And this is I what people say, the need one, to do. You do. And the one the one wonderful thing was was during COVID, we were able to do that, weren't yeah. we? And we, we did that as a family too. We we sort of rediscovered little mm. places. The only, the only thing, and I and I always do speak about this, is that suddenly because of COVID and, and all of these these beautiful lodges and guest houses all kind of you know, they, they got rid of their uh, their international bookings and suddenly their prices came down and then they managed to attract a lot more South Africans. Yeah, but now they're struggling to push their prices back up because the South Africans are going, if you could do it for two years, you can continue doing it. But they can't. Really they can. really can't they because can. it's going to get to a you point where, it doesn't, yeah, it's going to, where it, it doesn't cost, it doesn't pay them to stay open. It, it's easier just to it close the lodge. But, yeah. That's the thing. Or have a separate rate for South Africans. I think it's only fair. They I really used, do. They yeah. used to do that. There used to be a, a sort of yeah. a dollar rate and a rand rate, which for some reason yeah. long ago was dispensed with. Leanne, unfortunately, mm. we've come to the end of the chat. It's, it was it's so been nice. wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so very much. I will keep up with your travels. We will talk again. You better. <laughs> we'll have to. Uh, so it's my, it's my big birthday next year. So uh, something epic has to be. I don't know what yet. I still got to get Iceland out of my mind to figure out where to next. No, but, but you can't. Maybe Mark's got to set it ideas. up for you without telling you. He must. Yeah, he must. But yeah, I don't know how we how we compete with Iceland. Maybe Japan. That could be stunning. Never done that. Fair enough. My guest today on In Conversation With has been Leanne Manis. Leanne, thank you so very much. I do believe that people are going to look at you now when they see you on television in a whole different light and go, oh, so... We saw all that and wonder where she's going to next. Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. Take much. Care. Bye.